this case study, a buck power supply development kit is used as a platform for an example buck converter. A bench supply provides bulk power to the kit at 9.2 volts with a 3 amp current limit. The buck supply regulates the output at 2.0 volts into a test load. A second software switchable test load is abruptly switched in and switched out and the transient response is observed using two different compensators. The first compensator is the stock out-of-the-box compensator supplied with the evaluation kit. This provides a baseline for comparison. The second compensator was designed in case study 1 and used here as the proposed candidate compensator. The first compensator uses three numerator multiply accumulates plus two denominator multiply accumulates, which includes the integrator. The second compensator uses four numerator multiply accumulates plus two denominator multiply accumulates, which includes the integrator. For reference, let's review the two compensators with an abrupt setpoint change. Here is compensator number one with a large setpoint step change. The top trace is the scope trigger, the next trace is the PWM timer pulses, basically the plant input. The next trace is the buck converter output voltage, and the bottom trace is a current probe point in the evaluation kit. Each pulse represents one 5 microsecond cycle. Here is compensator number two. Under these conditions, I prefer compensator number two. Now let's look at the two compensators with an abrupt load change. Here is compensator number one, the out-of-the-box compensator, which is our baseline for comparison. Here is compensator number two. As you can see, it is considerably slower to get the plant back on set point. A solution for this is to increase the gain for compensator number two. In this case, we increase the gain by a factor of four and have a look. That's much better. Now we can carefully contrast the two compensators. This is the out-of-the-box compensator and this is our proposed compensator with the gain cranked up by a factor of four. It may be a bit subjective, but under these conditions I prefer number two. At the very least, it gives comparable performance to number one, the reference compensator. Increasing the gain may have created a new problem with large set point changes. Let's revisit that and have a look. We definitely have a problem. We started regulating at 0.2 volts here and abruptly changed the set points to 2.0 volts up here for a net change of 1.8 volts. The peak output voltage is 3.15 volts, which is 60% overshoot. That's ridiculous. What can we do? In a previous video, we discussed error limiting. Let's try that first and see what happens. In the case of abrupt load change, the maximum compensator input error was plus 1.7% and minus 1.6%. To avoid interfering with compensator performance for transient response, we will clamp the error at plus or minus 2% and go up from there. And here are the results. Limiting at plus or minus 2% gives an overshoot of 6%. Limiting at plus or minus 3% gives an overshoot of 8%. Limiting at plus or minus 5% gives an overshoot of 15%. Limiting at plus minus 10% gives an overshoot of 29%. Limiting at plus or minus 20% gives an overshoot of 51%. For this exercise, let's say that we're willing to accept a 6% overshoot at startup. Let's set that aside for a moment and ask what else can we do? In a previous video, we discussed using set point ramping. Let's try that next and see what happens. In this scope shot, we are ramping the set point over 10 steps using the 4x1 compensator with gain 4. Overshoot is still quite high, but better than one step. Here, we are ramping over 20 steps, 30 steps, 40 steps. At 40 steps, we are 6% overshoot, 50 steps, 100 steps, and finally, 200 steps. 
The scope horizontal scale was changed to keep the action in view. This is now 200 microseconds. Now let's try open loop ramping of the duty cycle, then start regulating from the end point of the ramp. This requires initialization of the compensator so that the error history is zero and the output history contains the duty cycle at the end of the open loop duty cycle ramp. With the compensator properly initialized, we have a seamless transition between open loop duty cycle ramping and regulating at the 2 volt set point. In this scope shot, we're ramping the set point over one step. Overshoot is 8%, which isn't terrible. Here, we are ramping the duty cycle over 10 steps, 20 steps, 30 steps. Now the overshoot is about 6%. 40 steps and 4%, 50 steps and 3%, and finally 100 steps and 1% overshoot. The last idea we will consider is starting the compensator with the gain 1 coefficients, making the set point change, settle on and regulate to the new set point with the gain 1 coefficients, then switch to the gain 4 coefficients. We've already seen all the bits and pieces, so there's no need to show them all again. Just to review what we're doing, we found a compensator that we liked for transient response, but it caused trouble with large step change, such as we would have at startup. All of the solutions we have considered were attempts at dealing with this problem. Let's summarize the solutions we have considered so far for managing the large set point change with a compensator that we liked for transient response. The first solution we considered was error limiting, shown here. The second solution we considered was closed loop set point ramping, shown here. The third solution we considered was open loop duty cycle ramping, shown here. And the fourth idea that we considered was switching compensator coefficients. Here, we're starting the large step with the gain 1 coefficients, then switching to gain 4 coefficients after we're on set point. So somewhere out here, we would flip the compensator to use the higher gain coefficients. All we have to do is pick the one we like. I would lean towards number 3 or number 4, depending upon the design goals. Uh, this is number 3, this is number 4. Well, we had fun exploring transient response and the impact of the compensator on large step change for this buck power supply. This concludes today's video. Thanks for watching.